Everybody, welcome back to the Grognard's Corner, and we are taking a look at Mosby's Raiders: Guerrilla Warfare in the Civil War, released by Victory Games, 1985. Uh, I was actually a little bit on the fence about uh, filming this episode. Uh, we're actually going to be taking a look at the game straight fresh from the very beginning. I mean, I've got everything all set up. You know, all the counters are in the right places, and all the performance markers at zero, notoriety is at zero, bridges are in their proper places. I got my cup filled with the random uh, union reinforcements. I, I wasn't quite sure I was actually going to do the, the actual first turn, um, because like I mentioned in my last episode... I've never played this game. I've owned it for several decades, but uh, I've actually never gotten it on the table. So I wasn't quite sure if I really wanted to uh, record myself bumbling through the uh, the first turn playthrough. But you know what? I figured, eh, you know, it's entertaining. I'm sure a few of you will get a chuckle out of it for me, uh, me bumbling my way through the rules and making a complete jackass and moron of myself. I'm okay with that. I do that a lot. So, <laughs> there we have it. So, here we are looking at, uh, jumping right into the game. We look at the sequence of play, preparation. We already got Union units in the container, which is my random mug of goodness over there. Uh, determine Union awareness. That's pretty simple. We just, uh, depends on, uh, what, uh, Mosby's notoriety is. We'll determine how aware things are. Uh, we currently see, uh, Mosby's, uh, notoriety is a one. So Union awareness is only one, and that becomes important in activating Union units. Uh, place Mosby and Mosby's Confederacy. Uh, so we got the map here. As pretty much, I don't know if you can really see the difference, but there are these areas that are dark gray in origin. There's maybe, you know, 15, 16 of them right here. That's basically the area where Mosby can start off. You can start them off anywhere in there. Um, and then if you also look at the map, we've got uh, some, I guess these are gold outlined and gold colored. And then you've got these blue ones. Let's see if I can zoom in without losing too much detail. So yeah, here's the gray one for Mosby's Confederacy, and then you've got these gold brownish ones, I guess, for neutral, and then the Confederacy, the actual lines of the Confederacy, and the blue circles. And basically everything beyond that blue line is all Union territory. We've got these blue hexes right here, which are large Union forces, which are basically uh, just the permanent army locations. And of course, there's District Columbia up there, and you know how nasty it is because there's <laughs> large Union forces all over the place there. So, and these 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 can actually change. There are random events that ex that can extend the Union lines, and we'll see if that happens or if it doesn't happen. So that's all set up. Okay, uh, move units Union units outside of Union lines was first turn. There is none of that. Recruit Mosby's Raiders. Okay, locate Mosby's court note right in the recruitment table and roll a die. So we've got a recruitment table over here. Let's see if I can actually zoom into it and if the light doesn't. We may not be able to see it real well. There it is, yeah. We're not going to be able to see it real well. Anyway, so that, there is a recruitment table over there. Take my notoriety, which is currently one. Roll a six-sided dice. So I got my handy-dandy cup. And that will determine how many, uh, what the strength of my forces are. So, we rolled a six, and that is a one. So um, we're just really starting off. Nobody in the Confederacy knows who we are. I don't know why anybody would want to run with us, but I got a few guys. And there's this box up here that we have. That we put our Raider Strength at. So there's Raider Strength 1. And there, it goes all the way up to 9. Yeah. So that's the maximum Raider Strength you can have. So we've got that convenient counter there to let us know what our Raider Strength is. 
And then, uh, pick an action card. Also on the table that we recruit from is uh, two other, or is another uh, column for how many action cards we get, depending if Mosby's wounded or not. So he is not wounded, and we get three action cards out of that. So I've got the action cards sitting over there. Let's go ahead and draw three. One... A two, a three. All right. Let's take a look at what we got. All right. First one, Sergeant Ames. Uh, Mosby can enter up to three Union occupied spaces. No activation checks are made. Combat is not met. Okay, that's actually pretty damn good. So if we come across any occupied spaces, I can just kind of sneak and slide right through those without having to worry about activating the uh, the uh, the Union units. Uh, spur horses, move one extra space during rounds. Okay, that's always pretty good. And counterattack. Uh, roll the die again to resolve combat. Ignore any action cards discarded after previous combat. That basically, if I roll uh, combat and I don't like the results... I can roll it again. So we got some pretty good action cards there. I do like I do like Sergeant Ames. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do a Google search to find out see who exactly Sergeant Ames is. So all right, and then after that we roll a D6 for the number of random events we get, and this could really screw us. But we have three random events. And we got the random events sitting over there. Let's go ahead and pull those. A one, a two, a three. Now, these all have to be done. No specific order in how they have to be done, so let's just start off with the first one. Okay. <clears throat> union Sweep. Roll a dice and place a Union Combat Unit in Piedmont, Rectortown, Goose Creek, Salem, White Plains, Hopewell. Okay. That we can actually live with. So we've got a six, which will be Hopewell. I have no idea where that is. So we have our handy random cup of Union forces. And we pull out a random one. And we don't know what it is yet. So it is going to remain on its inactive side. And we just have to find Hopewell. I have no idea. And they don't even really think there is a way for me to... Find someplace quick on the map. Hmm, this may take a little bit. I'm going to guess it's not within the Union lines. Piedmont, Rectortown, Goose Creek. Let's see if I can spot any of those others. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh my god, this is going to kill me. Alright, well, you know what? Let's set that one off to the side real quick. Alright. Um, Colonel Delaney. Uh, place Colonel Delaney's marker in Alexandria. Okay, this is one of the two Union officers that Mosby can try to kidnap. Now, he will actually remain on the map until I draw the other second Colonel Delaney card. And I have a feeling it's probably going to be a, kind of a nasty one to try to get. Let's see where he is. Alexandria. And again, I have no idea where any of this is. There should be, should be a marker on the map. I believe. See, when I said that this was going to be amusing, watching me bumble around for it. <laughs> Should be a big eagle on the map. It's going to be in Union Lines. Maybe it's on one of the bridges. Ah, all right, there we go. Well, there's Colonel Delaney. 
right up there. He's up there in Columbia. Right here. All right. Okay, got that one. And, uh-oh. I, I was hoping that this wasn't going to have an extend front. Roll on the extended union lines table. Please, space status markers. Question site up in each space. Okay, this is basically... The unions have have, have undergone a, a, an advance, a campaign, or what have you, and they've actually extended their front lines. So let me see if I can find the actual table. Extend uh, union front lines. So, all right, roll a d6, and we get a two. Okay, now fortunately, these I do know are marked on the map. As you can see, we have one, two. These these yellow. Lines right are those yellow uh, uh, yellow boxes. So that makes that easy. And I think there's something about large union force. I actually think that's a large union force because there's the uh, the uh, union flag there. So. I'm going to place large union force there. And for all intents and purposes, this now becomes part of Confederate territory. Which actually may be pretty good, because I actually may uh, may want to head into there and poke my nose in and see what, uh, see what happens over there, rather than trying to go someplace else. It's, you know, well within easy territory for me to get out of. All right, so anyways, <laughs> to figure out this union sweep. I'm going to pause it real quick so I can try to find where this stupid location is, and we will be right back. All righty, managed to find uh, where it was at. Hope well, it's actually within Confederate lines. So uh, that'll make it easier for when we run into this uh, that card in the future. <sighs> and I actually think... I know where my first target's going to be. Okay, so basically now I go into operations. So if I'm moving within, so basically every turn, Mosby's got one of six actions he can do. Uh, move, that's obviously an easy one to figure out. So we're going to go ahead and jump here. And when we're doing it within either uh, Confederate space or neutral space, as long as we're not in Union lines, you know, wherever the... Union and beyond, and plus these locations over here now. There's no worry about it. Don't have to worry about rolling for anything. Don't have to check for anything. Um, so that's the first thing, and then that's done. So now what I want to do is I want to do a probe action, because I want to see what is sweeping through there. So I'll take a look at probe action. Okay. Looking at the rules. Okay, if you do not have an action card that automatically allows you for probe, must roll a dice. You can play action cards. Okay, if the result is greater than the universe, probe is successful. Uh, but if the union units are outside of union lines, you can examine the units and put them back in the space inactive side up. You do not put a space status marker. Okay, so if they're outside of union lines, so I can take a look at them. No problem. So what have we got here? Uh, looks like we've got a small infantry force. So, uh, the probe, and since it was outside of Union lines, I don't have to roll for activation. Um, so that actually ends that action. So we've already done two actions. Now I can take as many actions as I want. The turn really doesn't end until either uh, I, I voluntarily end the turn or I choose to skedaddle out of combat. Or there's a couple three ways, but... Turns keep going until basically I choose them to end, or through force of combat. Um, so what we're going to do next is uh, we, I think we're going to go ahead and move. Yep. What we want to do is we're just going to move right into there with that Union force right there. And when I move, let's see. Da, da, da. Okay, entering an unrevealed space, entering an occupied space. If a moving unit enters a space containing active, it's not active, 
Raiders enter a space containing inactive union. Activation check must be made for each unit. If one or more units activate, then muzzle be must stop rounds and or must stop and rounds commence or continue. Okay, so we know uh, from earlier that the aware union awareness is one. So we rolled a one. Hey, of course they're doing a sweep. Of course they're looking for it. Okay, so that activates it. Since we uh, since we made their 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 roll. And we actually are now going into combat. Okay. This is going to get a little bit long and convoluted. Let's see. Combat during rounds. When the Mosby's Raiders enters a space, but we're not entering, we're already in. Da 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 da. Remember that you must make an activation check when Mosby enters an unrevealed space inside Union lines, not inside Union lines. Uh, if Union combat, okay. It's a combat unit, it's not a wagon train. Okay, if Mosby's raiders attack, they must attack all Union units in the space as one combined strength. If the Union, if the union units attack, only the active Union units in the space attack. A unit that moves into an occupied space is always the attacker, the other side is the defender. Alright, so I moved into the space, so I am the attacker. Uh, inspect the union combat units involved in the combat to determine their combined strength. It's a one. The unions are attacking. They're not. Okay. Divide the strength of the attacker force by the strength of the dividing force. Well, we've got their, their strength is one. We know our strength is one, so it's one-to-one -one odds. That's pretty easy. easy. Now, combat works a little bit odd. In most games, when you figure out the odds ratio, that's the chart you roll on. In this one, the odds ratio actually tells you a dice roll modifier. So, one to one, with me having initiative, there is no dice roll modifier. Um, then, check the union reaction chart to find the modifier to the combat dice roll due to union's familiarity with Mosby. Let's see. Hmm. Mosby's notoriety plus union awareness is a two, so it's a grand total of plus two to my dice roll. And then any cards I want to play. So basically, we're looking at uh, d6 plus two. And then that'll tell us. Let's see, a five, which will be a seven. On the combat results table, ends up being a union R2. Which is a uh, union retreats and must lose strength points. Woohoo! So it's the R2, so it's got to retreat and it loses two strength points, which is only one strength point unit. So yay, Mosby's Raiders have blasted them damn Yankees coming into our territory. <laughs> now, let's see. I also get performance points because I did a successful action. So one performance point plus a number of performance points equal to the original strength of the Union forces. All right, so I get two whole performance points. Let me go ahead and move that on our little performance point chart. And every 10 performance points gives us one notoriety. Um, now, under normal circumstances, uh, I would have to check for, uh, see if any surrounding units were activated but were not next to Union lines. So I really don't have to check because there's no chance of Union forces showing up because there's no Union forces around. So uh, that ends that round. That was combat. And then we go right back into operation. And I can, well, we're just going to move again. So let's go ahead and we'll go one, two, and I'm doing multiple moves here just because I can do multiple moves. Three, four. Okay, so now we're now we're adjacent to Union lines because of the, the extended Union lines. So we're going to go ahead and do a probe into that space. check to make sure I'm doing this right. Probe action. Okay. If the space is within union lines has not been probed or into place of revealed space status, then draw one unit from the container. Uh, oh, that's, that's probe if I use a card. Okay, if you do not have an action card that automatically allows you to probe, you must roll a dice, play action cards, 
If the result is greater than a union awareness, the probe is successful. You can examine the space as described. If the result is equal to or less than, probe fails and union activation may occur. So we know uh, union awareness is a one. So <laughs> hold on one. Woo! We just love how our dice rolls. Okay. Probe fails and union activation may occur. All right, see below. Uh, check for union activation only if the probe attempt fails. Follow the procedure of 7.2 to determine if union units become active. If the units become active, commence rounds. All right, so 7.2. Now this is kind of where it gets kind of kind of iffy for me because activating union union units because it can kind of have a cascading effect. All right. Uh, If Mosby fails a probe, you make activation checks for the union units in the space that was probed. Okay, so we make an activation check for that. And an activation is... Just rolling against the union awareness. So. <laughs> I don't like that dice already. Alrighty, so it becomes active. If the result is greater than the awareness, the unit remains inactive. If the result is less than or equal to the union awareness, the unit becomes activated. Flip the unit over and take a look at it. Well, I didn't hadn't drawn for it yet because... Alright, drawing out of my cup. And what did we get? Uh-oh. We got a slightly stronger two-strength unit in the, in the space this time. And that gets flipped over to reveal. So, now it's going to start to get interesting. Okay. If Mosby fills the probe, you make activation checks for the union in the space that was probe. 6.1M. Okay. And it is now activated. So what does that mean? Because I have not moved into it yet. Activation union union units. See, this is where I'm not really sure. Let's take a look at the sequence of play. Determine which space is both inside and outside of eligible activation check. Okay, using the device to determine any. Okay, you. Okay, da da da. Okay, I go into rounds. Okay, it is possible from go to operation rounds several times in turn. Term initiative, determine which side has initiative by rolling a die or playing an action card. Initiative is determined only once, and the side gaining initiative has until rounds are over. Okay, well, let's see. Initiative chart, there is an initiative chart, and we take a look at it. And my notoriety is only, or is only a one. So, oh, Jesus! So the union actually gets, the union for this set of rounds actually have initiative. And there's this handy little, let's see if we can actually zoom in. I doubt it'll work too well. But we've got this little box way up here. That's got both. Well, here we got. Come on. Yep. Helps if I zoom back to normal. Anyway, you got uh, Mosby initiative. And union initiative. I'll place that in the initiative box. So the unions have initiative, which actually could be very, very bad. Okay. Then, using the activation procedure, determine if any additional units become activated. All right. Now, this is where I said we kind of had that cascading effect. So we've got one activated union unit out there. And there's a chance other union units may become active as well. Okay. Let's see. Where exactly is that? Union movement, union combat, random movement. Okay. Let's take a look at the examples of play. 
Nope, that's not going to help. <laughs> All right. All right, well, I'm just try to speed things up. I'm fairly certain that every adjacent space gets an activation check. So let's start with here. Okay, two, nothing activates there because we had to remember union awareness is one. Large union force, four, for that. Four. Okay, so nothing around it activates. Um, then, since the unions have initiative, it's uh, it's uh, Mosby and the union units alternate performing actions. And uh, since the union aren't in combat with them, they're going to roll to move. And there's actually another table you roll for that. So let's see what the effects are. That is a one. Uh oh, what is a one? One on the union movement. Stop and deactivate. Okay. Well, all right. They they know the uh, the, the raiders are out there. But it's like, eh, we don't care. <laughs> and well, since we have no more union forces on the board, we go back to uh, to normal uh, operations. No need for me to probe it because I already know it's there. So let's just go ahead and move into it. And as before, we see if it becomes active, which it does not. And so we're going to attack it, but I am at one to two odds now, which is a minus one modifier. Um, and my notoriety and awareness is a plus two. So it's a grand total of plus one on the dice roll. And the plus one on the dice roll is a two plus one is a three. Uh-oh. That is a gray D. Disband and lose the battle. All righty. So, Mosby's Raiders disband. I lose the battle. I think I have to make a wound check on Mosby as well every time I lose a battle like that. Da -da -da -da. Too much checking of the rule book. See, I told you this is probably going to be a bad idea, but I'm sure a lot of you are getting a chuckle out of it. <laughs> All right. I cannot find it. I'm not going to worry about it because we're ending the round anyways. Um, so yeah, that's basically uh, the end of the round then because I lost the battle. Uh, tried fighting against uh, uh, too much superior forces. Uh, all Union units get flipped over to their, their uh, inactive side. Discard all action cards except for hold cards, but the cards we had were not hold cards, so those get discarded. Remove Mosby counter and the rate of strength point. Uh, advance the game turn one marker along space along the game track. And then go back to preparations and start the game the next turn. Well, that's kind of the basics of it, folks. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not much to it. Uh, like I said, 13 pages of rules. Lots of uh, lots of different stuff you can do. Lots of uh, the, the randomness is definitely there. So no two games are ever going to be the same. And that is a quick look at the playthrough of Mosby's Raiders. Thanks for watching, everybody. I may continue this game. I may not. I don't know. I've got a couple other things I want to get on the table. We shall see. Talk to everybody later. Bye.